we have here today is the Nighthawk Sandhawk. The gun itself comes in this padded little gun bag here. Um, nothing crazy, just has some pockets in the front, carries some stuff, comes with the original uh, iron sight plate that was on there that I replaced with the uh, optic plate. It also comes with a little, you know, literature and stuff like that in here, the Nighthawk patch. Um, but the case, nothing spectacular. It's pretty basic. Do you expect something more for the cost of this gun? Maybe. Or are you one of the people that cares more about the firearm and not what it comes in? You decide if that's worth it or not. First thing we're gonna go over is the fit and finish. This thing is probably one of the nicest firearms I've held and shot and had a pleasure to enjoy for an extended period of time. And full disclosure, I do not own this. Nighthawk does not know who I am. They have no idea I exist. A really good friend of mine let me borrow this gun. But this gun here is probably one of the nicest guns when it comes to the fit and finish. The barrel and slide fit, the lockup is just perfect. There is no movement whatsoever. The slide to frame fit is perfect. No side to side wobble, up and down wobble whatsoever. The slide to front island style compensator this almost feels completely smooth on the separation here almost completely smooth and it lays very flat another thing one of the smoothest cycling and buttery slides i will say for the price of this gun i don't like the little hiccup on that disconnector you can see there you see it stops you can see the little hiccup there it'll catch on that for the price of this gun, they definitely should have had a ramp cut out on the bottom of the slide or something to not catch that disconnector. So that is something that is very disappointing about it because I have an Atlas that doesn't do that. I even have a Prodigy right here that I put an EGW kit in and it catches way less than the Nighthawk does. That is a bit disappointing considering the price of this gun, but Everything else, when I'm talking about fit and finish, the slide to frame here, you can't even feel the extractor here. You can't feel that. It's literally perfectly flush. You can it's almost like it disappears. The beaver tail, aka grip safety, you can see goes completely flush here. Also the safeties, you'll see when it's um, disengaged, there's actually slightly raised here. It's not as blended as I would hope. My Atlas is definitely more blended in that aspect. I don't know what safeties these are, um, but they're very crisp, very tactile, very, very, very crisp. You can hear that. The trigger, another thing, I'm a competition shooter, so I'm used to pound and have to around a pound 14 ounce triggers on my 2011 style guns this one is more of a tactical if you want to call that or duty style trigger i would put it around the three and a half to four pound mark it's very crisp don't get me wrong the wall is very very defined you see there's the take up and then boom, there is your break. Very little over travel. And then the reset. Very short. It's very, very positive reset. And then right back on the wall. And then another break. But like I said, it's three and a half to four. Of course, when you're shooting, you don't notice it as much. As you can see, I have this gun outfitted with the Surefire X300 Ultra in the RMR, the RM06. Awesome little uh, red dot. Definitely, um... Durable. Looks nice, especially with the different color FDE, you know, gives it that scar vibe. I will definitely say this gun is a flat shooter. Very, very soft recoil. For an island comped gun, I wouldn't say that is the flattest or the softest feeling or perceived recoil that I've experienced. I definitely still have to say that the Staccato XC still feels better to shoot maybe i have to do a video 
side by side. I have shot both, but in separate occasions, not at the same time. But this gun definitely is a flat shooter. And I do have some shooting footage of me on this gun, obviously. It'll actually be my legitimate first shots on the gun. And uh, I shot it a lot more throughout the day. I just completely forgot to record because I was actually just enjoying myself too much. All right, so what I got here is the Nighthawk Sandhawk. These are going to be my first shots. My good friend let me borrow it. I am not rich enough to buy one of these, but I don't know if it's zero, but I'm going to try to take... Uh, Initial 10. All right, let's see what we can do. First shot low, but then expecting a the recoil. But that, this thing here, yeah, it's accurate. The recoil is nothing. Yeah, I can see why people pay that money for it. Now, the question I've been getting is this gun worth the money? To me, I would say no. What you get in here is great. Don't get me wrong, the gun itself is beautiful. Fit and finish is amazing. It is a Nighthawk gun at the end of the day. So I think that definitely comes into play with the one gun, one gunsmith, which makes the cost make more sense because there's one person putting their heart and soul into it, and I appreciate that. But I am a competition shooter. Some of the things that are done to this gun that you will not really be able to see or feel when you're shooting makes it not worth it to me. If I was a collector or a person that just had unlimited amounts of money and wanted a piece of art, like this thing has a literal piece of gold for the front sight bead. This gun is just made to, to flex really. It doesn't really have a avenue really. It doesn't have the most aggressive texture. Triggers, you know, on the heavier side for a double stack 1911 platform of this caliber and this price range. Um, no magwell comes on it, you know, just comes just like this. It is optic ready out of the box. That is great. The optic system is amazing. This thing does not move whatsoever. Had the single slot rail here, you know, just pull that off. Slides, you know, slides a sure fire on and off. No problems. Doesn't go anywhere, but I cannot justify that $53, $5,400 price point for this gun. There are a lot of options that are a thousand, fifteen hundred to two thousand dollars less. You get a lot for your money and you can get more. Yes, the gun is nice, but I would not spend my own money on this. And for all you stats junkies out there, I'm gonna post a little picture up here so you can see it. Pause if you want to. Um, don't really want to go over all of that, but the gun is made with quality materials. There's no doubt about that. There would never be a concern on if this gun uh, is made out of MIM parts or anything of that nature. You don't have to worry about that. This gun is made out of machined steel, and it feels like it. It definitely does. But let me know in the comments, do you believe this gun is worth that $5,300 price point? Can you justify it? And if so, let me know why you think it's worth that. And if you don't, same thing. Let me know why you don't think it's worth the money. I already gave you my reasons. But if I had an unlimited amount of funds, I would buy almost every 2011 that exists. That's just me. It's my favorite platform. But if I'm going to be using the gun for a specific purpose, I need to find a justification as to why I'm paying that much. So, yeah, thanks for watching. And uh, please subscribe. Hit the like button. Want to help me get to a thousand subscribers soon? You know, just trying to see what I can do in this YouTube platform. So, thanks for watching.